What do you get your mushroom loving friend for her birthday? Well, today is our friend Katrine's birthday. And Katrine loves mushrooms more than anybody I know. As a matter of fact, we call Katrine the mushroom ninja. She knows so much about mushrooms. So for her birthday today, I am making her a quiche of champignon, poireau, et pommes de terre, or mushroom, leeks, and potato quiche. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. If this is your first time tuning in, let us know you're out there by giving us a big thumbs up below and then hit that subscribe button to make sure you never miss a video. Now, let's start cooking. So I know it looks like a lot of ingredients, but really a quiche is really basically three simple elements. You've got a crust, which I've got here. I've got a handmade pastry crust, which by the way, if you wanna know how to make that, check out the video right above. So we've got the crust, and then we've got our filling, which is gonna be mushrooms, leeks, and potatoes. And then you've got your liquid ingredients, which help to bind the quiche. So we've got, uh, for that liquid in, uh, filling, we've got 300 milliliters of creme fraiche. Okay. We've got 300 milliliters of milk. And you know, your creme fraiche, you could actually use just regular heavy cream for that if you wanted to. And I've got five eggs, and I'm gonna add a couple of egg whites to that. And then, just for fun, we're gonna add some cheese. Uh, we're gonna put uh, a little, I've got a little bit of goat's cheese that I've crumbled in here. I've got a little bit of Emmental, which is a, basically a Swiss type cheese. And then we've got a mimolette, which is similar to a dark cheddar, but it's very, very, very tasty. And then we're gonna season it with uh, some herbs of Provence. And in France, herbs of Provence are, are a little bit different than what you find in the United States. As a matter of fact, in the United States, when you buy Herbes de Provence, a lot of times it comes with lavender. Well, the original Herbes de Provence really does not contain lavender. It contains rosemary, thyme, basil, marjoram, parsley, savory, chervil, and oregano. And those are the basic ingredients of Herbes de Provence. So once we have our crust, and then we've got our filling, then we'll just add a couple of uh, things to, to enhance it. Of course, we've got um, some, some garlic here that we're going to uh, use when we, when we saute our, our vegetables. And then I've got a, a, just a few of a one mushroom that I, that I have uh, sliced, and this is just gonna be to finish, uh, to top the, the quiche with. And then uh, with our filling, we'll add just a touch of nutmeg. Uh, anytime you're doing, you know, filling with kind of a bechamel filling or cream and milk and eggs, uh, nutmeg is one seasoning that really, really uh, helps to bring out those, those flavors. And a little bit goes a long way, and it's always best if you freshly grind that nutmeg as you use it. So those are our ingredients. Let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is to fill our pan with our crust. That is just great. And what we're gonna do is I'll take, I'll just take the edge of my, I'll take my roller and just press it along the edge. So what we'll do now is we're gonna put this in the oven. First, we will just poke a few holes in it. And these are just air holes to keep it from, from bubbling up. And now I've made a, a little parchment paper. This is uh, just a circle, it's called a cartouche, but I've made this to go right inside of our pan and we're just gonna fill that with some baking beans. And these are, these are the ceramic baking beans that you can get. You could also use uh, just dried beans if you've got them sitting around in, in the house. So we have preheated our oven to 375 Fahrenheit or 190 uh, centigrade. And we will just, we're doing what's called blind baking this crust. So we're going to, to kind of pre-bake the crust before we fill it. And then we will, and while that's pre-baking, we will make our filling. 
and be ready to uh, add that to our quiche. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is parboil our potatoes, but we are going to partially boil them, and I'm just covering them with some cold water and just about a teaspoon of salt, and we're going to bring that to a nice simmer and let them parboil and we don't want to cook them to death we just want to soften them because they'll they'll finish cooking in the uh, in the oven with the rest of the items in the quiche next let's make our filling so we're just going to crack our eggs into the bowl now it's always a good idea to crack your eggs away from the the bowl that you're actually going to be putting them in so if in case one of them cracks and you have a little shell fall it doesn't fall into the bowl that you are actually cooking the with got our eggs in i went ahead and added my egg whites and i'm just going to go ahead and, and give those a quick little whisk and we'll throw in our milk and our cream or our creme fraiche as it were and that will be our filling and now let's just grate in a little bit of our nutmeg right into this filling and nutmeg is one of those things that you want to you want to have the effect of it being there, but you don't want to actually taste nutmeg. So you just want to know that it's there, but uh, it's silent. Once we put everything together, we, once we cook all of our filling, and we'll add our herbs of Provence at that time. While our potatoes are parboiling, we are just going to lightly saute our mushrooms that we're reserving for our garnish. Okay, I'm just cooking these gently, and now once I flip them, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of salt to this, and that will help draw the moisture out. And I'm gonna turn my heat down quite a bit, because again, we don't wanna completely fry these. That's all we need for those and they will be ready for the top of the quiche. Okay, our potatoes are parboiled and they are, yeah, they still, they're still a little resistance, which is what we want. So we will now just drain those and we'll set them aside. And now what we'll do is we'll cook our, our leeks and our garlic and I'm just going to add a little bit of oil and I'm, I'm, I'm adding grapeseed oil to this and some butter I think I may have forgotten to mention the butter earlier but we're just going to gently cook our our leeks and uh, we'll add our garlic to that as uh, once our leeks get about halfway cooked, we're going to add our garlic to it and let them just soften up. We're basically sweating them. So in go our leeks. And if you've been with me before or for a while, you know that anytime we're sweating something, leeks or onions, we add a little bit of salt to that because that helps to bring the moisture out starts them to cooking as well as pre-seasoning so we'll let these cook probably about five minutes or so till they start to soften then we'll add our garlic you want to add garlic a little bit later because garlic tends to burn quickly and with your leeks we're again we're just trying to soften them and I'm trying to break up the you know the large the pieces that are kind of stuck together we don't want anybody getting a large chunk of leek, although that couldn't be that bad. And now we'll add our garlic to this and let that soften as well. 
So we'll just let them let them cook for about five minutes and just occasionally stir it just so that nothing gets stuck and starts burning. Our leeks and garlic are good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these. And um, you know, if you had a small amount, you could leave them in, but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and take these out because we have a large amount of mushrooms that we want to, want to cook. So we don't want our, our leeks and garlic to, to burn. So what I'll do is add just a little bit more oil here and probably another tablespoon of butter. And then once that butter starts foaming, we can then add our mushrooms, just like that. And mushrooms are kind of like your onions and, and your garlic. We're basically sweating these here at first. And we're gonna add a little bit of salt to bring out that moisture and to flavor them. And I actually like to go ahead and add a little bit of pepper when I'm doing mushrooms. As well, so a little salt. And a nice twist of freshly ground black pepper. A little pre-seasoning. We are just going to let these cook. We'll stir them every once in a while and they, you'll start seeing the water, the water come out of them. Now we've got a combination of, uh, of mushrooms here. I've got some uh, mushrooms that are called champignon de Paris, the, the brown ones here, which are uh, the same as basically baby Bella's. And um, then we've got a mushroom that's called a pleuro grease, which is basically an oyster mushroom. And they have wonderful, deep, deep flavor. So I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. We don't want to, we don't want to burn anything, but we just want to soften them and get them, get them partially cooked. In the meantime, let's check on our crust and see where we are with that. Okay, our crust is definitely getting brown around the edges. So now what we'll do we will take out our, our baking beans. Beautiful. And if I'm honest, I'll tell you that this crust, really, I, I could have left the overhang of the, of the, of the crust before I, I cut that off, and it would have just fallen off, and it probably would have avoided a little bit of the shrinkage that we've got going on, but it's going to be fine. And so now what we will do with this crust is I'm going to put it back in and let it brown up a little bit on the bottom for about five minutes. All right, so to continue with our filling, our mushrooms have given up their water and starting to dry out a little bit in the pan. So now we can go ahead and add our leeks back in and our potatoes. And we'll just get all of this cooked together, just to let all those flavors meld. And then we're going to set this, this filling aside until our crust is ready. And now is the time you can kind of taste things for, for seasoning, but we know we've already seasoned the mushrooms a little bit, we've seasoned the leeks a little bit, but we didn't season the potatoes, or actually, actually we did put a little bit of salt in the water. But uh, now is when we can, I'd like to add a little bit of my Herbs of Provence. And we can turn our heat off now. We don't really need to cook this anymore. What an incredible aroma. That is ready to go. Okay, while our filling cools down, we've taken our crust out. And one little trick that you can use is to, just to uh, brush your crust with a little bit of egg yolk and this helps to seal it and just keep things from 
from seeping through. So we're going to brush this with some egg yolk and then we'll put it back in for just a couple of minutes to get it sealed. And then we'll be ready to fill it. Okay, our crust is ready to fill. I'm just gonna go ahead and add our cheese into our wet mixture. Just like so. Let's get that mixed in. And the other cheese, I'm just gonna, well, I'll, I'll sprinkle, sprinkle some of that in, but then the rest of it we're going to leave for the top, just because of the beautiful color. And I did taste this while we were gone, and it tastes fantastic. So we're gonna go ahead and put our filling in. And we've got quite a lot of filling here. You wanna probably fill it up, fill your case up, no more than about halfway full. And just to be on the safe side, we will ladle in our filling. Oh, look at that. Hmm. All right, we will get this filled and we'll be ready to go in the oven. All right, we've got our filled. I'm just gonna add a little bit more of our Herbes de Provence right over the top. And let's sprinkle our beautiful mimolette over the top, just like that. And now let's just finish it. with our mushrooms, our mushroom caps. And now we are ready to hit the oven. And so we're gonna go in the oven now for probably 30, 35 minutes until this is all puffed up and just beautiful. So when you put the, the quiche in the oven, Now's the time, you can go ahead and turn that oven down. I'm gonna turn mine down to 180. It was at 190 or 375. I'm gonna turn it down to 180 or 350 Fahrenheit to cook the quiche because you don't want the outside, you don't want the top to cook too quickly uh, before the inside cooks. So that's what we'll do and we'll let that cook 30, 35 minutes. Okay, our quiche is ready. We just if you, to, to test it, you just stick a uh, toothpick in it and if it comes out clean, it is good to go. So this one is ready. We're just gonna let it cool down for a little bit. This one took a little bit longer than 35 minutes. It probably took 40 minutes. Of course, you know, my wife is from Chicago, so we did kind of a deep dish version of this. So I'm just gonna run my knife around the edge here just to make sure we can get it out of the circle. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Okay, it's still just a little bit warm. Our quiche is done. It is absolutely beautiful and it smells incredible. Of course, I won't be tasting this one because this one is for our friend Katrine. So we will be taking this to Katrine and uh, we'll have to let you know what she says. Thank you guys for joining me today. Really appreciate you tuning in. If you like the video, hit that like button down below and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified as soon as we uh, release a new video. And don't be afraid to tell your friends all about Home Cooking with Chef Walter. We'll see you next time.